In this video, we discuss the IETF requirements related to product or process change control and what documentation should be reviewed and where required updated in preparation for a change. So now, firstly, let's look at product change. How should this be considered? So I guess that the first point, Paul, is that this is only going to be applicable to those organisations that are product design responsible. Uh, product design is the only clause that can be excluded from certification. So organisations that just manufacture won't be uh, this won't be applicable to them. But for those that are product design responsible, once the need for a potential change is identified and before approaching the customer, the potential risks in making the change should be considered. OK, I understand that. So how should this be done then? Now, the, the, the beauty of this in theory is that as an existing, if it's an existing product, then the organization will already have undertaken a design risk analysis in the form of a design FMEA, failure mode and effects analysis. The logical starting point would be to revisit that um, and review the potential change based on that existing uh, design FMEA. And from that, identify any potential risks. I guess once, once they've done that, and determined that the proposed change looks feasible, the risks have been considered, um, at that point, the customer should be approached. And they would do that using the relevant um, request for change documentation mandated by the customer. Yeah. And what about prototypes, if the customer requests prototypes? Yeah. And, and again, this will depend slightly on the change, but that is a possibility. The customer may request prototype samples. And, and if that were the case, those prototypes should be manufactured using the prototype control plan. So let's go to the next stage then, assuming the customer reviews the proposed change, they accept the proposed change. What happens next? So the next phase would be moving into the, the, the sort of doing phase, the implementation phase. And this would mean reviewing and assessing the implications of the change on any production documentation. For example, the process flow, the process FMEA, the control plan, and any standardized work. And again, depending on customer requirements, it's possible that a trial batch may be manufactured, uh, incorporating the product change under very sort of controlled um, serial production conditions. And, and again, you would consider this almost like a, it's, it's like a new project. So it would go back through the project planning phases. Um, and obviously, any customer specific requirements associated with part approval would have to be understood and, and satisfied. Yeah, because I guess that is going to vary depending on which customer uh, is being supplied with a change product, because they may all have different part approval requirements. Yeah. OK. And for manufacturing process change, would this process that you've explained be similar? Yes, in a word. Again, the, the the big difference is the design authority. So if the organization aren't changing the product design and don't have design authority, then the design FMEA aspects of the change would be managed by the design authority. But the rest of it would, would be the responsibility of the organization. And again, the same approach of managing and understanding process risks and um, submitting samples for approval and updating the various uh, production documentation that we talked about. So what are some of the relevant IETF requirements then related to this manufacturing process change or the product change? Both of these fall into Section 8 operation and we've got 8.3.6.1 which focuses on design and development changes for those design responsible organizations and then we've got 8.5.6.1 which is a more general control of changes requirement uh, again within section 8. So I guess as 8.3 is in the design and development section of ITF that does relate could relate to both the product change 
and the manufacturing process change. But the one in 8.5, I guess, is probably more orientated towards the changes in manufacturing. What about the team then? Who should be involved in this change control process? The customer uh, for this type of change where we're talking about you know, product design and, and manufacturing is has to be involved uh, as, as part of this process. But internally within the organization, there will be a, a cross-functional team. Again, consider it in, in the way you would consider a new project following the advanced product quality planning or maturity level assurance or however your organization manages the introduction or changes associated with new projects, you would expect that same cross-functional team, including suppliers and customers, to be involved in that. So let's summarize. So the management of product change will only be the responsibility of an organization if they have product design responsibility. The risk in making a product design change should be considered before any change request is submitted to the customer. Upon agreement to implement any product design change, all of the relevant documentation needs to be reviewed, including the process FMEA, the control plan, and the standardized work. And of course, in any aspect of change control, customer-specific requirements for part approval have to be understood and met. So let's summarize the key learning points. Any product or manufacturing process change has to be effectively managed by the organization, including appropriate communication and approval with the customer. The important thing is before any change is implemented. All of the relevant product and manufacturing process documentation needs to be reviewed as part of the change control process. And finally, suppliers need to be involved in the change control process as appropriate. 